This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey guys, welcome to my PIP ENV crash course. Now, PIP ENV is the recommended way to install Python packages and use a virtual environment because when you use the, the PIP package manager that's bundled with Python, anything you install gets installed in, it gets installed globally. So you don't have encapsulated uh, environments for your each project that you create with Python, whether it's Django, Flask, or some other, you know, machine learning project, whatever it may be, you want to have each project have its own environment and PIP ENV allows us to do that easily. Uh, now before we would use virtual ENV to create a virtual environment and then run PIP from within there, but PIP ENV automatically creates and manages a virtual environment and it also uh, allows us to easily add and re remove packages using uh, a PIP file which is similar to a package.json file if you're familiar with Node.js. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just experiment with it a little bit. I'm going to show you all the common commands, how to set up an environment, how to install packages, how to run security checks, things like that. Um, now, I have a cheat sheet, which is uh, this is a gist right here that has most of the commands, all the important commands that we're going to be running. So I'll put a link to this in the description. Uh, and of course, you need Python 3 installed. So just go to python.org. Right now, the latest version is 3.7.1, but I believe I have 3.7.0 on my system, which is fine. All right, so I'm going to jump into VS Code here. And by default, if you're on a Mac and you do dash dash version, After Python, it's probably going to be 2.7. So once you install Python 3 in the global space, you'll have to use Python 3. As you can see, you also have to use PIP 3. Um, now, once we create our environment, it's going to use Python 3 by default. So to install PIP ENV, let's go ahead and run PIP 3 install. And this will be the only time we need to use PIP 3. Uh, and let's install PIP ENV. Okay, now you'll see mine says requirement already satisfied. That's because I actually already have it installed. Now, if I do a PIP3 freeze, this will show me everything that I have in my current environment, which is actually my global environment. So there's a bunch of stuff here and you can see the problem. If I have a bunch of different projects, everything from each project is just jammed in here and it's it's just not very organized. Um, and the only reason I have all this is because I've done simple tutorials where I just I wanted to explain, you know, one or two things and I didn't want to go through virtual environments. But now with PIP ENV, it makes it much easier. So I'll be using that from now on. Um, and one mistake I made is is not using PIP ENV in my Django course. Uh, I admit I was a little late to the party. So when that course is updated, it'll also use PIP ENV. All right, so let's go ahead and activate our environment with pip env shell. So once we do that, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to launch, as you can see, launch our subshell in a virtual environment, gives us the location of it, and then it also creates a pip file. Now, if you're familiar with Node.js, this is very similar to a package.json file. It'll list all the packages. It'll list all the dev packages or dev dependencies. Shows us the version of Python and so on. So to uh, before we install anything, I just want to show you that if we do a Python dash dash version, not Python 3, just Python, it's going to be Python 3 by default. Um, if I were to just run Python and run the shell here, let's do a quick import of the sys package and run sys.executable. This will show us where Python's being executed from and notice that it's inside of our virtual environment here. All right, if I were to let's quit out of the shell here and let's exit our virtual environment with exit. And now let's just run Python and it's 2.7. So now I'm, I'm just running it in the global space. And if I were to do the same thing import sys and run sys.executable to see where Python's being ex uh, executed. It's just the standard Python 2 location. Okay, so you can see that we have a, a completely different environment when we're when we're in PIP ENV. So let's go back in there. So shell. 
and now what I want to do is install something. So I'm going to say pip env install. I'm going to install something very simple. It's just a package called camel case that will allow us to just uh, to, to it gives us methods to do things like capitalize the first letter of each word. Very simple package. All right. So now, as you can see, it gets added into our pip file. Just like it would if you were to do an NPM install with Node, it would add it to your package.json. And this asterisk basically just means it's the, the latest version. Um, now it also creates a pip file.lock. And if you're familiar with lock files, basically it has all of our dependencies. and any dependencies of those dependencies and it'll give us a deterministic build um, so that we can use the same versions of everything when we when we're ready to deploy okay because if something gets updated and, the, and you deploy and it installs the latest version you might have problems all right so we don't want to actually touch this file so now we have camel case installed if we wanted to use it I'll just quickly give you an example I'll just go into Python and I'll say from camel case import the camel case method here um, and then we can create a, a camel case object I'll create a variable called C and just set it to camel case and let's create a string I'll just say this actually I want to use all lowercase this is my string and then let's just do a print and let's take that camel case object and let's do dot hump it has a method called hump and we can pass in our string and now notice that every first letter is capitalized okay not really relatable to um, pip env but i'm just showing you an example of using uh, a package that we we installed so let's go ahead and quit okay uh, let's see next thing i want to show you is I want to show you how to list the packages that are in your environment. Of course, I mean, you could look in your pip file, but if you want to check, you can use uh, not Python pip env lock dash r. And notice we only have camel case here. All right, so let's go ahead and uninstall a package. So we'll say pip env uh, uninstall camel case. Okay, so it'll uninstall it and you can see now it's removed from packages. If I run my pip env lock dash r, there's nothing there. Okay, now we can also install dev packages or dev dependencies. These are packages that are only meant for your dev environment that you don't want in production. So let's install. Uh, let's install nose, which is used for testing and stuff. So we'll do nose and then all you have to do is dash dash dev. So it's similar to dash dash save dash dev on node or NPM. So let's run that. And now notice it gets put under dev packages and not packages. All right. So now I want to show you how to install packages from a requirements dot. txt file. So what I'm actually going to do is go to GitHub real quick and I'm going to use the project from my Django course. Whoops. And let's see, I'm going to go to repositories and I'm going to search for BTRE and it's this right here. It's the real estate uh, application that we built in the Django course. And there's a requirements.txt file that has uh, all the all the dependencies that are needed, including Django. So I'm going to just copy this and inside of our uh, file explorer, I'm going to create a file here called requirements.txt and I'll just paste that in and save. All right. Now to install the all of these uh, packages, I can just simply do pip env install. dash r and then the location of the requirements file which is in the current folder so dot slash requirements dot txt and let's go ahead and run that and it's going to add them to our pip file it's also going to update our lock file okay so let's clear this up and now we actually have django installed so we could create a django project if we want by doing django dash admin and let's say start project and we'll call it test project. 
And this isn't a Django tutorial. I'm just giving you an example here. Uh, so it created a folder called test project with our manage.py, which is basically our, our CLI for Django, and then just some of the core files that it creates. So we can actually run this. Let's CD into test project and let's do Python, which is our Python 3 our, our, that's in our, our virtual environment. And we want to do manage.py. And then let's do run server. It's going to tell us about migrations that we ha have unapplied, but we can ignore that. You can see the server is running on port 8000. Let's open it up. And there's our Django project. Okay, so we have that running in our virtual environment. All right, so let's go ahead and, and stop the server here. I just wanted to kind of show you we could do that. Uh, we want to let's see where are we? Let's CD back. All right. Now, another thing we can do is check for security vulnerabilities, and we could do that with pip env check. So it's going to go ahead and look at all of our packages and it comes up with an issue. So uh, basically, let's see, it says uh, before Django 2.12. Uh, unprivileged users can read the password hashes of arbitrary accounts. So there's an issue, a security issue with version 2.1.1, which is what we have installed. So it's basically just letting us know that and we should update to the latest version 2.1.2. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to change the version to 2.1.2 in my pip file, save it. And we just simply need to run pip env install. And that will update Django for us. It'll update the lock file as well. And then once that's done, we can run the check again and, and that warning should be gone. So let's just go ahead and run pip env check. And now everything's all good. All right, so let's see. The next thing I want to show you is how we can view the uh, basically our dependency tree or graph so we can run pip env graph. And it's going to show us all of our dependencies and then any dependencies of our dependencies. And we don't have much here, but if you had a bunch, it would show you the how everything is organized nicely in a, in a graph or a tree. All right, so let's see when you're ready for deployment. Uh, I'm just going to do something here and uh, I'm going to I'm going to reinstall camel case. So pip env install camel case. And when we install something like this, we get the asterisk, which is just it means the latest version. Right uh, now, when you deploy, you want to make sure that you have the version that you're using here in in development, because if you just run pip uh, pip env install on your server, it's going to install this latest version. So what you usually want to do is um, you want to uh, ignore the pip file and use your lock file. So I'm going to clear this up and you want to prepare your lock file first. So you can do that with pip env lock. Okay, and then when once you get on your server, you can do pip env install and you can do dash dash ignore um, dash pip file and it will install whatever the whatever the current version it, that it was when you installed. Basically, it's going to look at your pip file here or your I'm sorry, your your pip file lock. All right. So the last thing I want to show you is that we can actually run stuff with pip env without being inside of our virtual environment. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out. Okay, so now I'm just back into my global scope here and let's say I want to run Python with pip env. So I could do pip env run Python and it's going to open up Python and notice it's version 3.7. I didn't use Python 3 like I would have to do globally since I used pip env. It's using that it's it's use it's running it with that. So if I do an import sys And we check out sys dot executable. It's using our pip env executable. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that you could do that as well. 
So I think that's it, guys. I mean, there's there's other there's other commands, there's more advanced stuff, but this is a, a nice workflow to create Python applications of of any kind, really. And it's it's organized. You have everything in your pip file. It's it's like I said numerous times. It's very similar to Node and NPM, which I really really like how they do it. Um, so uh, this is this is definitely what I would recommend doing, as opposed to using virtual ENV. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this little crash course, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.